Uh, greetings. This is iVideo. Uh, my name is John Savers. I'm your host, uh, and today uh, we will continue our little series on World War II. Uh, as you recall, um, iVideo is the um, program which looks at history in a broad sense. Uh, we may look at war, uh, we may look at um, economics, uh, art, science, uh, religion, and so forth, uh, and try to um, perceive uh, aspects which are not um, uh, generally uh, considered. Uh, we hope by such a, a means to get a, a, a more rounded uh, picture of events. Um, we, um, we think that uh, often um, uh, the uh, presentation uh, tends to be uh, angular and irregular due to uh, the uh, serious omissions and misrepresentations by establishment historians, propagandists, uh, dilettantes, etc. We hope to do better, and uh, for this reason, we uh, we love the obscure guru, or the um, uh, the the uh, thinker that uh, is not uh, uh, known for his credentials, but um, rather uh, has facts uh, uh, and bases opinions on. Uh, uh, facts and, and truth, uh, law and so forth, um, and not uh, trying to overwhelm with towering uh, credentials from the great universities of uh, America and so forth, many of which are now mm, not so much uh, intellectual institutions as uh, mystery institutions. At any rate, uh, we have uh, embarked uh, on this um, first look at World War II with a look at the uh, aspect known as the uh, concentration camps and so forth, noting uh, that um, there has been uh, a good deal of um, snowballing of um, uh, this particular aspect uh, into a great um, uh, monument uh, to uh, the event of religious monument, uh, apparently known as the Holocaust. We are not uh, interested uh, in the religious aspect so much as the historical event itself, uh, and have taken some time to look at it in that respect. Uh, we have looked at the numbers involved. We have looked at the ambience, that is, the environment of the camps. We have touched upon the, uh, the uh, views, the, um, the notions of the uh, German officials. Uh, we've touched on immigration. Um, We've looked at this uh, from a number of um, uh, reviews. Um, we have uh, touched upon the Nuremberg trials, and uh, uh, we have touched upon uh, the fact that um, uh, there seems to have been uh, involuntary uh, uh, testimony in those uh, trials and uh, fraudulent uh, uh, misrepresentations and so forth. Now it is this last uh, area that we wish to uh, concentrate on in uh, this and the uh, perhaps uh, following um, episode. Uh, we, we intend to look at uh, fraudulent um, uh, photographs for the most part um, used as part of the documentation against the uh, German uh, uh, officer corps, the um, uh, civilian um, uh, people um, uh, involved with the political regime uh, and used uh, in part um, uh, to uh, bring forth a verdict um, which meant death for many of these people. Um, uh, we, we feel that this is a, a ghastly situation, uh, an immoral one, uh, one which should be rectified uh, and uh, that the, uh, the whole thing uh, represents uh, a, a tremendous slander against the German people and is a, a dark uh, crime, actually, uh, in the hearts of the uh, Allied um, people uh, who were in power at the time and uh, who um, uh, caused this to uh, happen. Uh, but at any rate, uh, we do know that uh, this whole um, episode of the, uh, uh, the deaths and the, the so-called Holocaust um, has been parlayed into a great political leverage uh, in many, many nations, as well as providing great uh, economic benefit uh, to uh, uh, Jews and uh, perhaps also to Masons. Um, but at any rate, um, 
uh, it has um, been an embarrassing blessing, I think, uh, uh, and one which um, uh, no one should be proud to be a part of. But uh, let's take a look uh, at this uh, whole situation um, uh, for the, with this first little piece to consider. The orderly situation prevailing in the German concentration camps slowly broke down in the last fearful months of 1945. The Red Cross report of 1948 explains that the saturation bombing by the Allies paralyzed the transport and communications system of the Reich. No food reached the camps, and starvation claimed an increasing number of victims, both in prison camps and among the civilian population of Germany. This terrible situation was compounded in the camps both by great overcrowding and the consequent outbreak of typhus epidemics. Overcrowding occurred as a result of prisoners from the eastern camps, such as Auschwitz, being evacuated westward before the Russian advance. Columns of exhausted people arrived at several German camps, such as Belsen and Buchenwald, which had themselves reached a state of great hardship. Belsen camp near Bremen was in an especially chaotic condition in these months, and Himmler's physician, Felix Kirsten, an anti-Nazi, explains that its unfortunate reputation as a death camp was due solely to the ferocity of the typhus epidemic which broke out there in March 1945. Memoirs, 1940-1945, London, 1956. Undoubtedly, these fearful conditions cost several thousand lives, and it is these conditions that are portrayed in the photographs of emaciated human beings and heaps of corpses which the propagandists delight in showing, claiming that they were victims of extermination. This is a citation from Did Six Million Really Die? Page 22. Now, people, these um, ghastly scenes of bodies and so forth, um, you know, often faked um, or misrepresented fraudulently, um, must have inspired uh, kind men and um, unscrupulous uh, people uh, to um, uh, invent uh, horror uh, by inventing bodies. But to do so required not just photographers, but also artists and they need not be particularly good ones at that. But uh, before we get into the uh, pictures, the documentation of fraud, uh, I'd like to give you a little anecdote uh, that occurred uh, to one uh, German doctor, so please attend. A startling case of such forgery was revealed in the British Catholic Herald of October 29, 1948. It reported that in Castle, where every adult German was compelled to see a film representing the horrors of Buchenwald, a doctor from Gettingen saw himself on the screen looking after the victims, but he had never been to Buchenwald. After an interval of bewilderment, he, he realized that what he had seen was part of a film taken after the terrible air raid on Dresden by the Allies on 13 February 1945 where the doctor had been working. The film in question was shown in Kassel on 19 October 1948. After the air raid on Dresden, which killed a record 135,000 people, mostly refugee women and children, the bodies of the victims were piled and burned in heaps of 400 and 500 for several weeks. These were the scenes purporting to be from Buchenwald, which the doctor had recognized. Well, uh, this anecdote uh, kind of sets you up, I think, well for the following photographs. Uh, and now I'd like to give you a, a, a citation um, uh, in regard to the, the premier source of, uh, of this particular um, uh, uh, program subject, uh, and also a... Um, a rather um, uh, kickoff uh, of this uh, with a ghastly photograph, which is faked. 
but uh, consider it, please. An excellent work on the fake atrocity photographs pertaining to the myth of the six million is Udo Walindi's Forged War Crimes Malign the German Nation, uh, 1989, um, Hall, 1996. And from the numerous examples given, we illustrate one overleaf. The origin of the first photograph is unknown, but the second is a photo montage. Close examination reveals immediately that the standing figures have been taken from the first photograph and a heap of corpses superimposed in front of them. The fence has been removed and an entirely new horror photograph created. This blatant forgery appears on page 341 of Arch Nobel's book on the SS marked on Morrow uh, with the uh, 1957, Frankfurt 1957, with a caption, Mauthausen. The same photograph appeared in the Proceedings of the International Military Tribunal, volume 30, page 421, likewise purporting to illustrate Mauthausen camp. It is also illustrated without caption in Eugene Arano's uh, Concentration Lager, uh, document F321 for the International Court at Nuremberg. Heinz Kuhnrichs, Der Kz Stadt, Berlin, 1960, page 81, Vaclav Bierdick's uh, Mauthausen, Prague, 1959, and Robert Neumann's Hitler, uh, Munich, 1961. Now, this is a citation taken from Did Six Million Really Die, uh, pages 23 and 24. Well, as many of you uh, may perceive, uh, uh, these uh, kinds of things uh, were used under the color of law uh, to uh, bring terrible sentences upon uh, the uh, German uh, officer corps and civilian uh, uh, leadership uh, responsible or held responsible. Uh, and indeed, uh, if there is such a thing as a hate crime, uh, uh, this whole Nuremberg uh, setup was a great hate crime, um, uh, the incarnation of it. But at any rate, uh, let's take a look at uh, some of the photos. The caption to this photo appearing on page 6 is, To the Execution. It was published with this text in Eichmann, uh, 1961, uh, page 200, um, Frankfurt, uh, M. Uh, Rodeberg, Verleg. Although this picture initially appears as genuine, the sloping walls of the shed, the distorted window, the different lengths of shadows, as well as the suspicious shadows on the necks, all show that this picture cannot be a genuine photo. The photo on hand of the three women was already published in 1956 by the publishers Volk und Welt, East Berlin, in the book Geisel der Menschheit, uh, by Lord Russell of Liverpool, uh, page 193, translated, uh, Scourge of Swastika, Short History of Nazi Crimes. Now, the text uh, there reads, newly admitted concentration camp prisoners on their way to medical inspection are cut from a photo found on a German prisoner. Now, mind you, this is the same photograph uh, as the one with the caption to the execution. Strangely, these are completely different circumstances. But still, the text here is obviously invented. There are no further details of this German soldier, and from the picture, not even this circumstance can be proved as there is no concrete evidence as place and time. Apart from this, no German army members were allowed to enter the concentration camps before 1945, at least not in uniform. The uniforms of the soldiers show them to be frontline troops, not camp guards. The first publication of this picture was, however, shown besides numerous other improbable pictures without text in Eugene Arano's concentration lager document F321 for the International Military Court in Nuremberg. It was taken over in damaged condition from the files of the International Military Court, volume 30, uh, page 393. Now, if you look at this enlargement of the soldiers uh, uh, taken from page 5 of uh, Walindy's book, uh, you will see uh, that uh, it cannot be anything but fake. Um, uh, these are uh, drawn figures whose anatomy is partly wrong, especially the upper 
Uh, and under arm of the second soldier from right. Um, so enough said. Now, I, of course, do not intend uh, that this should be a girly show, but uh, at any rate, um, uh, these uh, particular kinds of pictures were utilized, I think, because they are striking, um, because uh, they uh, tend to uh, make the Germans involved more brutal, uh, picking on the, the female principles that were... Uh, it also um, uh, affords an opportunity for oogling, uh, which is uh, always something that um, uh, I think these con men calculate. But at any rate, uh, let's continue with another set of pictures. Now, this photograph appeared on page 14 of uh, Wellindy's book, uh, Forged War Crimes Belying the German Nation. Uh, it has the caption, Women and Children Just Before the Execution, uh, published with this text in... Uh, Fascism, uh, ghetto, um, mass and mord by the Jewish Historical Institute, Warsaw, Frankfurt, uh, M. Roderberg, uh, Verlag, um, uh, 1969, page 334. This picture is a photographed drawing. The whole situation, including the background, is unrealistic. The black head of the prison guard, as well as the overexposed effect and anatomical distortion of the women in front and in the back, is a primitive production mistake. The deliberate unclarity and incorrect light and shade variations make all further analysis unnecessary. Now, we'll present uh, two subsequent versions of this uh, first picture for your consideration. I, I think that uh, you'll start getting the picture, that is, the forged picture, pretty clearly. Now, this is taken uh, from page 15. It's the top photograph, and it carries the uh, caption, The photographer of the women in Treblinka who are going to the gas chambers with their children on their arms is not known. It was published with this text in Der Gelb Stern, uh, Hamburg, 1960, page 163, of course, uh, translated the Yellow Star. Published also in uh, the Pictorial History of the Third Reich, a shattering photographic record of the Nazi tyranny and terror, Robert Newman, Helga Koppel, uh, Bantam Books, New York, 1962, page 191. Apart from other retouches, note on this picture the guard with a cap instead of a hat, and the woman in front of him has long hair and shaded legs. In regard to the next picture, the lower photograph uh, appearing on page 15 of Walindy's book, we have the caption, the women, huddled together from all parts of Europe, had to undress themselves and their children before they were led into the gas chambers. Uh, this was uh, published uh, with this text in Eichmann, uh, Frankfurt, uh, 1961, uh, page 202. Uh, this picture is a straightforward drawing and an improved edition of the one that uh, pre appeared first, uh, taken from page 14. Now, I'll show you uh, a couple of enlargements of this uh, picture um, uh, taken from page 16 of Melinda's book now, and uh, I'll let you uh, have a closer scan. Now, this is an enlarged section from the picture which appeared on page 14. The woman on the left now stands in the light, including her flank. Apart from that, she now has long hair. Only one leg of the baby can be seen. The woman in the shade on the right appears for the first time in this group. A clear example of how one can practically make a body appear with the help of retouché and drawing. The background and the space between the feet are completely changed. The back of the guard is not shaded black anymore and the baby suddenly has shiny hair. The coloring of the second woman behind is also different. The position of the legs of the woman carrying the baby and the one behind her are different in comparison with the older picture. Now this following picture is an enlarged section of the picture uh, which appeared at the bottom of page 15, the third version. 
this picture was also printed in enlarged form uh, in uh, Stanislaw Lincoln's 1939, 1945. Uh, we have not forgotten uh, Warsaw, 1959, page 107, uh, version gas chamber, as well as in other Polish books. And in Robert Newman's Hitler, um, I in a document, uh, uh, Wien, Basel, 1961, page 193. Well, now, that uh, must seem pretty astonishing for all of you who uh, take your uh, newspaper and papers and news magazines and um, propaganda books too seriously. Um, uh, it's easy to become uh, uh, duped by these people. Uh, it just uh, kind of snowballs over you. Uh, uh, you get uh, go with it or you get uh, uh, buried. But... Uh, at any rate, um, contrary evidence is hardly ever uh, adduced. Uh, uh, there's a good deal of uh, obstruction of any effort on that uh, in that way, uh, and uh, uh, pretty effective. But at any rate, uh, it is just such um, bogus uh, documents uh, that uh, we find the, um, the prosecution in Nuremberg using. Uh, to uh, convict uh, German uh, officers and uh, civilian leaders and uh, often to put them to death. So uh, this is a very serious matter and uh, no joke. Uh, but at any rate, uh, let's look at some additional photos. Now this particular photo appeared uh, on page 18 of Walendi's book uh, with a caption, uh, To the Execution, uh, published with this text in S. Einstein's Eichmann, uh, 1961, page 200. This picture is actually a photographed drawing, which is not even well done. Light reflections, focus, lighting a background. The white woman on the right with no contours whatsoever speak for themselves. It is also to be noticed in the details of the picture that faces, hair reflections, and shadows are exactly as the whole situation, completely unnatural. The uh, next photograph uh, uh, appeared on page 19. Uh, it is, as you can see, the same uh, photograph, or the same picture. Uh, it carries the, um, the uh, caption, No Barbarism Too Infamous, Jewish Women on Their Way to the Execution. It was published with this text in Der Spiegel, uh, 1966, uh, page 48. Now, it also appeared, uh, this picture, with a caption, Mass Executions uh, in Letland, uh, published with this text in Gerhard Schoenberner's Der Gelb Stern, Die Judenverfolgung in Europe, uh, 1933, bis 1945, Rutten, Lorning, Verlag, Hamburg, 1960, with a foreword by Thomas Mann, page 97, um, that is the Now, in regard to this uh, photograph appearing in 19, um, Der Spiegel wrote in a private letter in answer to an accusation that the picture was forged. Naturally, Der Spiegel cannot prove that this photo, but at any rate, this picture is a better retouched version of the picture we saw on page 18, the previous picture. Compare the women in the background. The distance between the knees of the woman on the left and right front the right leg left in the picture of the third woman from the left, the generally new presentation of the ground in the background, and the new shading, which here also does not match the lighting circumstances. The foreground is light, whereas it is dark in the original picture. The ground is tilted too much, as it is supposed to be a plane taken from the front. Measured by the steps of the women running behind, the soldiers are away at least 15 to 20 meters from the other women. Documentary photos show that the soldiers are much too large for this distance. The soldiers carry their arms differently. Uh, enlargements of the two pictures uh, do not correspond. As many of you have uh, 
have now inferred, uh, I'm not a linguist, and uh, the pronunciation of these uh, German and East European uh, names and places and so forth are just uh, efforts and not um, uh, to be taken as uh, accurate, but um, uh, look at the uh, print uh, itself and, uh, and try to um, uh, discern, if you will, uh, and those of you who wish to substitute your own pronunciation, feel free. Uh, 